When I was starting to prepare my notes for this set of episodes all about energy and blowing up the sun and, and looking at how energy is stored and transferred across the universe, I came across a very interesting paper, and I hardly ever do this on the channel, but I have the paper right here in front of me on my laptop, and I'm actually going to, to read a section of this paper. And this paper is written by uh, Masataka Fukugita and Jim Peebles out of Princeton. Both of them are at Princeton. This is way back. They wrote this back in 2004. And it's a paper called The Cosmic Energy Inventory. And it just, I just loved this paper. I just loved this paper. It was just such a cool picture of our universe. It's almost like the, the state of the universe report where they went down the list of everything in the universe. Just here's a list. It's like so cool. And they, and they have this wonderful table and I'm going to read bits and pieces of this table to you. And I know that sounds absolutely thrilling for a YouTube video that I'm about to read a table to you, but, but I want you to go on this journey with me. It's like, it's like a census for our universe like you know it's like you know every every country does a census like how many people there are uh, how old are they do they have any kids what kind of jobs do they have this is a census of our universe and of course a bunch of these numbers depend on various models and some of these are out of date because this was written in 2004 and it's not 2004 anymore but it still gives you a broad sense of how mass and energy are distributed in the universe just just what's the universe made of? What's what's all the stuff that we might or might not care about? And of course, the biggest thing by far, the absolute dominant component of our universe is something called dark energy, which is sitting at around 70% of the total energy in the universe is something that we completely don't understand. We call it dark energy. It's the accelerated expansion of our universe. That's a whole other show discussing what that even might be we we just don't know most of our universe is totally unknown so that's number one and by far number one number two is dark matter dark matter again is something we don't fully understand we understand it better than dark energy so we got that going for us at least it's some form of matter that is invisible it just doesn't interact with light seems to be the dominant component of matter in our universe Whatever, that, that itself is also a whole other video, but there it is. That's at number two. So dark energy, dark matter, and you're already at like 95% of the universe. Dark energy, dark matter, you're already almost there. You're already almost there, which is just ridiculous. And we just keep going down the list. Now, the way these authors broke down the table. They started with what they call the dark sector, which is dark energy and dark matter. And then they also have gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are a source of energy. You know, they can, they can do work. They can stretch things out. They can squeeze things. And there's some gravitational waves that are left over from the early universe, from the earliest moments of the Big Bang. We call these primeval or primordial gravitational waves. Missions are being designed right now to try to hunt for them. We have no detections of them, but we're pretty sure they're there. They play a role in this. They've been around for a very long time, uh, but it's something like 10, 10 to the minus 10. You know, instead of 0.7, you know, 70% or 20% is like a trillionth of a percent of the energy budget of our universe is in primordial gravitational waves. There's also some radiation left over from the very early universe, like the cosmic microwave background. But even that, that's sitting at 10 to the minus four in terms of fractions of the total amount of energy in the universe, 10 to the minus four is in the cosmic microwave background. And that is by far the dominant component of radiation in our universe, and already it's peanuts. There's also some neutrinos left over from the early universe. We haven't detected these neutrinos yet. Uh, they, there's more of them, so they're sitting around 10 to the minus 3. So there's more energy in those early neutrinos than there is in the early radiation. There's also 
and this is the first entry we have with a negative sign, there's some binding energy left over from the early universe. Binding energy is just when you, when you take two things and you glue them together, it takes energy to break them apart. And so in that sense, they're storing energy. And so they get a net minus sign associated with them just to make sure all the math adds up. And so there's there was some formation, nuclear formation in the very, very early universe. And that stored some energy in the binding of inside of hydrogens, inside of protons that, that bound up some energy and it's setting around 10 to the minus four. So right there, the, the cosmic microwave background is that 10 to the minus four, and then this nuclear binding energy is at negative 10 to the minus four. So they pretty much cancel each other out. Uh, then we get to to the baryons, to the matter that interacts with light. You know, you, me, stars, galaxies, clouds of gas and dust, the usual stuff that we know and love. 4%, 4% is in something called the warm intergalactic medium, which is just diffuse hydrogen and helium just floating around, not really doing anything interesting or useful. 4%. Some of it is inside of galaxies. Some of it is outside of galaxies. There's also plasma that hangs out inside of clusters of galaxies in between galaxies themselves. It, that plays a role that's something at like, uh, looks like 0.2%. Uh, there are stars. Now we're finally getting to stars. Stars are, what is this? Uh, 0.15%. Think about that. Think about all the stars in the night sky, all the stars you might see in a picture of a galaxy, 0.15% of the total energy in the universe is in the form of stars, which isn't much. If you're depressed by that, go to patreon.com slash pmstarter to help support this show. Awkward segues, but this is the way of the future. There's also white dwarfs and neutron stars and black holes and smaller things like planets and brown dwarfs, uh, molecular gas clouds, uh, just clumps of condensed matter. There's also black holes. All of these aren't really playing a big important role. We're talking like 10 to the minus three, 10 to the minus six, 10 to the minus five, all the energy, like black holes make up 10 to the minus five, you know, of the total energy fraction of the universe. There's also gravitational binding energy, like you're gluing stuff together to build stars, to build galaxies, to build larger things. So there's like negative 10 to the minus seven, negative 10 to the minus six for building the large scale structure of the universe. And we start getting into stars and white dwarfs. So, so it, note there's something interesting here. A star has positive energy because it has mass and mass is energy, but it also has negative binding energy. So all the stars in the universe contribute like 0.15% of the total amount of energy in the universe. But then they also get some entries in the negative column because they have binding energy, but that's like 10 to the minus, minus 10 to the minus eight. So very, very small fraction. There's some nuclear binding energy from the formation of elements. I guess this is just such, such a fun fun table. And then of course, there's lots of extra radiation floating around from the stars themselves. There's radio, there's microwaves, there's infrared, there's optical, there's gamma rays, there's gravitational waves. All these are, again, like 10 to the minus six, 10 to the minus nine, super small, but they're there. And of course, there's neutrinos manufactured by stars. There's cosmic rays and magnetic fields up there at 10 to the minus eight. And then there's kinetic energy too of, of stuff flying around that gets a positive contribution, but again, very, very small. I haven't read the whole table. I think the coolest thing about this table is that this table exists, right? Think about that. We can make a census. I'm looking right now at a census a listing of all, pretty much all the stuff in the universe broken down by categories, going everywhere from things that take up good chunks, good fractions of the mass of the universe or energy of the universe to stuff that, that is barely a player at all, but big enough that we can actually measure and estimate. I think that's pretty cool. 
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Make sure notifications are turned on. Check out another video and go to patreon.com slash pmcenter so you can keep these shows going. See you next time.